So in the previous video, we applied our UV mapping and from there you should have extracted your normal map data and your diffuse map data. Now this is just the colour channel and the normal map channel. Uh, if I switch to Photoshop, you should have ended up with something like this. This is just the base diffuse channel, just taking the colour information that we added to our high resolution model and baking it out for us. And this just gives us exact colours for areas like the straps and even the studs on the boots. What you will also baked out is a normal map, something similar to this. Now all I've done with these two uh, sets of images is just overlay them, cut out the bits that we didn't need and then flatten them down just to give us uh, two maps rather than a series of different ones for each different element and with these colors uh, to hand and this normal map what we've essentially got if I go back to Maya what we've essentially got is the foundations of the textures now this is still our low resolution model remember but by adding in that normal map data it's given us lovely surface detail still we haven't done anything with the hair yet that is just going to be textured separately we've UV'd it uh, we've thought about texture space and to have a different texture for each strand of hair would just take up lots of texture space so we need to think ahead and think well maybe every other strand could have a different texture so we have two hair textures and we just put them onto each one randomly. So the hair, I'm not really going to go into much deep, more detail with the hair, it's just going to be as it is, and then we'll just add a texture and create a normal map just to give it a bit of detail. So as I said, we've now got our foundations for our character. The eyes, I'm just going to duplicate the polygons here, and then we'll add another texture on top of the head there which we can then paint the eyes on as a different alpha channel. Now the eyes are very simple, cartoony style eyes, and in the game they're just going to swap the textures to give the expressions, much like in a cartoon. So we don't need to worry about blend shapes or morph targets or etc. It's just going to be a simple uh, texture swap. There is one more map we can bake out before we turn all our attention to the uh, texturing, and that is an occlusion map. And what that will do is it will give us the lighting information for this model. So, for example, underneath his hair, underneath his arms, under the uh, armour he's got here uh, and, and his belt and everything else. And then we can overlay that onto our texture uh, and that will just give us a lot more depth. If I turn off lighting, this is our current diffuse texture very flat, very boring, there's no depth or anything to it so we need to add to that and that's what we're going to do now. So the first thing we need to do if I just switch into this other model which I've made is just quickly go around and harden the edges of the belt and all these other bits. Now these edges aren't hard in the game model because we use a normal map to give those nice beveled edges. But when we're creating the light map, these will still be soft, but because we want these to have a harder edge and a harder edge feel to them, we're going to harden these edges now. And that is so when we bake the lighting, we'll get that detail in. What you also need to do, if I open up my UV texture editor, this is the current UV map, which you've seen before. But what I like to do is take everything that's mirrored and move it across uh, minus one. That just moves it out of the way and if you by accident don't click to ignore mirrored faces or something like that, these elements just won't um, have any lighting information applied to them because they'll just take the elements from here. Uh, I hope you understand that. So let's now generate a light map for this guy. You'll see I've added a floor plane in. This is just a basic polygon and what that will do is it will mean when the photons are cast from the sky down they will have something to bounce up off 
so we'll know that this area under, underneath him needs to be darker. Now to create his uh, occlusion map we are going to go to, now it's moved in my uh, um, 2013 into the colour and it's in here, batch bake, before it used to be in lighting and shading. So we're going to use colour, batch bake. Now you need to have the mental ray plugin enabled for this to work. Now you can see here where I've been playing around with it before, so I will reset those settings. So you select the model you want to bake the lighting on. We'll turn on use bake set override. And we are going to bake the occlusion. Now first of all, just set occlusion raise to 10, resolution 512 by 512, give it a name, um, Ninja Occlusion Baked perhaps, we'll change that to TGA. Now we're only giving it a low resolution because this is a test. I would always, always do a test because there's always some part of the model which doesn't work properly, the UVs are overlapping. The uh, or, or the light or this geometry intersecting, so it's always good to do a test run. So occlusion raise is only ten, so it's only going to do a very basic map. So if I click convert, what I'll do is I'll pause the video first. It may take a couple of minutes. It may be quite quick, so I don't know. So I'll just pause the video and click convert. So that's done. As you can see, it's very pixely, but it's a low resolution map, and it's only occlusion rays of 10 so it's very basic. Now if we turn the lighting off here uh, use no lights you can see it a little bit better just minimize that. So what we've got here is the basic lighting information as if the light was cast from above. Ooh. Under here we've got the nice dark areas where the hair is casting shadow. Ignore that seam there because that will go once we do the higher resolution map and we can always paint that out if we want to later got dark areas under here behind the belt and it's all looking pretty much as we want it there's no black areas where UVs are overlapping or flipped so when we're happy with that we go back to our options set it to the size of the texture page which we're using which we've baked out at uh, and I don't think I've mentioned this before but when you're doing any sort of texturing for games always work higher than your target resolution. So for example if it's a 1K map, 1024 by 1024, do all your texturing at 2K, 2048 by 2048. Now what I've chosen to do is do this at 3000 and that just gives me a bit more flexibility um, and I know this is going to be rendered out for use in the magazine so I want that extra bit of resolution just to add a bit more detail into the model. So we're happy with the occlusion map, how it's looking. So now we can go in, set our resolution, up our occlusion rays. The higher the number here, uh, the more accurate and the smoother the occlusion map will be. So maybe 150. Now this will take a while to do. Um, so set this going just as you're about to go for lunch or something like that and when you come back it should be done. So what I'll do is I will click convert, uh, I'll pause it, click convert and then we will look at the results. So that one's done, close that down, as you can see that's a lot smoother. We don't have our seams anymore. It is, it isn't perfect We've got these artifacts here because it is a low polygon model that it's baking the lighting information onto. And you'll notice areas like these studs don't look exactly right because they're using the lighting from this stud here, which is the only one with the UVs we're affecting. But we're not too concerned about that because these will be shiny, they'll be bright, so we can get away with just using one set of UVs. So that's the colour map and that's been baked out. So what do we do with it now? Let's switch back to Photoshop. Go back to our diffuse. So what I've also done is output a UV layout and here is our occlusion map. As you can see, slightly faceted. But what we can do 
is we can clean that up just by using a blur. Now what I'll do is I'm going to, I'll just save this, just to make sure. I'm going to go into my UV layout, or you could use your base colour map, because it's, this is just for a selection. We may actually use the base colour map. Turn off anti-aliasing, tolerance 1, like so. Turn off contiguous, that will just select all the empty space there. Go back to our occlusion map and we will just expand it by maybe two pixels. And then we're going to delete everything around it. As you can see, if I hide these layers, that's emptied everything. And now I'm going to go to filter, flaming pair and use one of these. Now fl these flaming pair filters are freely available online and they're great for filling empty spaces of textures just so you can avoid texture bleeding when the textures are reduced later on. So we'll just do A, and as you can see, give it a second, and there it's blended the edge pixels out for us. But that hasn't got rid of the faceted look. What we're going to do now to get rid of that, filter, blur, surface blur. We move to a section, turn off preview. If you look down here, I just select there and just zoom out. So that is just bl it blurring sort of the inner pixels in a way. But we don't want it to do it too much that it's going to affect those edge pixels and affect those seams. So what you may need to do is play around with these colours slightly and just uh, play around with these values, sorry, slightly until you get a, a look that's okay. We'll leave it at that for now, let it apply. Just wait a second. Now that's softened those faceted edges, but now we need to apply this to our base colour. What I'm going to do first is use an overlay, turn those layers on. Now sometimes an overlay will work, sometimes it won't. So a soft light is sometimes better, and that, that actually does look better if I zoom out. So as you can see, that has just added that lighting information into the texture, and already it's starting to enhance it. I'm just going to create another copy of that, and then we'll use a multiply and this is just going to darken those shaded shadowy areas just a little bit more. Now while we're playing with these occlusion maps you may be thinking oh well maybe I want the darker areas on the skin to be a slightly different colour. If I just turn this one off for now what you can do is select those skin colours on your base map and then we can edit the colours in the occlusion map. So image, adjustment, say hue saturation, just move this down here, set it to colourise and if you see there, just turning it on and off, it's tinted the highlighted areas yellow and then we can adjust the colours until we get the shadows a more natural shade of, uh, well perhaps more a uh, a bluey tint to them. Maybe darken it down. We can also brighten it up. Saturate it a bit more. And you see that yellow? I'm quite liking that yellow there. So, and um, also, we can do the same on the darker area. Image adjust hue saturation. We'll colorize that. Turn up the saturation. Now that's yellow there. So we can change this, again just trying to get those darker colours a bit darker. But you get, you get the idea with that, once you've got your occlusion map you can then change the colours of the occlusion map to get the uh, look and the feel that you're after in those shaded areas. So if I just save this out and then we'll jump back into Maya and we will uh, have a look at what the textures, how the textures looking so far. 
So if I go back to my There we go. Bring back our colour and I'll just quickly reload the texture. And there we go. You see, remember this isn't lit by anything but the occlusion map. And that has added a lot more added a lot more depth to the texture and given us an even better starting point for our character. Now, as I mentioned, there is a bit of a seam there, but we can take that into 3D Coat, an application that which we'll use later on for adding more normal map detail into the texture. And we can paint these areas out, or you could do it in Photoshop, and just get those seams seamless. So that's, I think we'll leave this video there. What we've done is we've just baked out some basic lighting information applied it to our model in a few different ways and it's just helped to enhance our basic diffuse map. So from here, like I say, we can start to enhance this, no uh, this texture map even more and enhance the normal map, adding in more details. But we just need to remember this is a cartoon character so it doesn't need to be hyper uh, super realistic. Uh, we're just looking for him to look to be fun um, and look pretty cool. So we'll cut this here and in the next video we'll start to look at the texturing process.